Hello, everyone, and welcome back to New Pantheon Academia. I'm your host, GM, and uh, vice principal today, Stephen Pope. Uh, have you been running in the halls? Don't do not do that. Don't run in the halls. That, that's something they say, right? Right? I don't know. I wasn't really... I don't really remember much before I turned 18. Hi! <laughs> welcome to our anime-inspired role-playing game here on Saving Throw Show, where we play... Overarms available now at Drive Through RPG. Now, before and uh, before I get into the rigmarole and the recap, let's meet our table. Uh, by the name of the moon, they will punish you, Aki. Hi, everybody. I'm Aki, and I play Manny Emancipation Brown, whose divinity is Maat, the goddess of truth, justice, and harmony. Um, and I'm really excited about today's uh, today's show. I. I have no idea what to expect and therefore live in object terror, uh, but everything should be fine. I love it. Uh, jo joining them is our own Sailor Venus, Mika. I get to be Sailor Venus? Wow. Yes. Hi, <laughs> I'm Mika. I am playing Dahlia Wingrove, your resident theater kid who knows everything about theater and not much about life. But we'll get into that later. Um, <laughs> uh, her divinity is Persephone, the goddess of the underworld, also the goddess of vegetation, goddess of goth girlfriends. We love her. Yeah. And fi and finally, our sailor Pluto, Kelly. Ah, it's me. <laughs> uh, I am Kelly okay, Nugent. Sailor Pluto is the best one. I'm just saying. Okay, thank you, thank you. Then I feel more powerful than ever. Yeah, Sailor Pluto um, is my favorite. Uh, I am playing Iris Snow, um, and her divinity is the goddess of the beginning, the goddess of the end, of everything and nothing, life, death, and all of it in between, Kali. Uh, so that's really fun yes, for everyone. It is. Uh, you'll notice we're one person short. Do not worry. They will be joining us. I promise. I don't know why I made that promise. I don't know if I can keep it. I have no control over this person's life, but I do hope they you set that. You set that fire alarm. So you... <laughs> uh, did I? <laughs> I did. It was the Phantom Queen. <gasps> the Phantom <gasps> Queen for sure did it. So, last week, uh, the four of you solidified your plan hey! for Speak the devil and the devil will appear. I couldn't let Father Mercury. Eric Riker, Eric Riker, Eric Riker. Yep. I Eric couldn't Riker. let Steven be a liar. <laughs> so if we see flames behind you, Eric, should we tell you or are you just gonna deal with it? Uh, just pretend it's a it's it's a cool green screen effect. <laughs> oh, <green screen. laughs> okay. All right. Uh yes, Eric, thank you for joining us. We're very happy you could make it and you are not on fire. Me too. You know, I, uh, I've i never been engulfed in flames, but I imagine it's not the most fun experience in the world. It's not fun until all your nerves just stop talking to each other. Okay. <laughs> what sailor is he? That's a yikes. Yeah. Sailor Mercury, I think. Oh, yeah. No, Eric is Sailor Mercury. Yeah. Yeah. Boomy. It's done and done. There you go. Yeah. So... Before I get into our recap, last week, you guys, yes, you people at home who watch this and support us, and we love very much, you unlocked something very special. You unlocked tarot cards for our players. Now, here is how this is going to work. I have here all the major tarot arcana. I did not include the uh, wands, cups, or other suites. We are just using the major arcana because... When I draw one of these, blah, blah, blah. when I draw one of these cards, if it's up, it'll be a good thing. If it's down, it'll be a bad thing. But if I draw one of these four cards, I will throw my hat, not literally, this thing doesn't leave my head, to one of our players, and they will get to narrate the rest of the scene. But if it's face up, if it's right side up, it'll be a good thing. If it's right side down, they have to make it a bad thing. Think of it like an improv exercise, but really horrible. Representing Dahlia, we have the star. The star is associated with art, beauty, and uh, kind of being on your own level. It's cool. I'm not dramatic. 
representing Iris, we have the Hermit. Representing, uh, sort of just focusing inward and being aware of your surroundings, possibly too much. Representing Manning, we have the Fool. The Fool is the first card in the tarot. It represents uh, infinite possibilities and also just kind of being a little doofy sometimes. But I'm not doofy. Manny's, Manny's, not, doofy no, Manny's not doofy. <laughs> Dahlia would argue. She's I don't know. I can see Manny walking in. I can see Manny walking into some. Uh, Lenny is the doofy one. <laughs> Lenny is the doofy one. <laughs> Well, Lenny is represented by the chariot. Oh. In this case, a cat in a recliner, recliner, because this is the cat tarot. I am nothing if not predictable. What does that mean for Lenny? The, the chariot represents uh, stability, strength, and organization. Possibly oh. too much yeah. stuff. <laughs> I'm a, I'm a, I'm a say that I like. <laughs> Two out of three of those I don't agree with. <laughs> I feel like Lenny is saying that that's what represents him. <laughs> well, I got to pick these and you didn't, so Nina and Poo Poo. <laughs> All right. So every $50 we raise in tips, I will draw from this deck, and we will see what happens. And. Another thing for a little more house cleaning, we are sponsored by Noble Knight Games. And Noble Knight Games has everything from dice to minis, an amazing selection of vintage, hard to find, and out of print RPGs and war games and everything else you need. And they ship globally. That's right, the people in here who don't live in the continental United States, one, jealous, two, you can get stuff too. Uh, but if you're within the United States, any order over 150 ships for free. And considering all the stuff they have, you will hit that limit. I promise you. You can also trade in and trade up. Clear off some shelf space. Get new books. Get new games. Go straight to Noble Knight Games where you can get your cash or store credit for new games. They'll even cover shipping to send your games in. So it's like eBay without the headache or having to consider shipping. Or leaving your house, which you shouldn't be doing right now. Don't do that. Stay home. I couldn't. My house was on fire. I had to stay outside for almost an hour. <gasps> I'm very sorry. It's if a you're slightly in a tarot, different situation. That's a very different situation. You weren't going to Applebee's. Don't go to Applebee's. No, I still think Eric's super, super selfish for leaving during a fire. <laughs> you should have <laughs> let let yourself burn. <laughs> oh, you really care about pandemic. the show. <laughs> I'm not having this conversation. Thank you. Uh, if you're in the chat right now, you can use command exclamation point N K G. That's exclamation point N K G for a handy link and use code saving 10 for 10% off your order of $10 or more. Complete your quest at Noble Knights Games today. All right. With that out of the way, we can start recapping this season because this is our season finale folks of new pantheon academia so what started with a strange talking rabbit who called himself orpheus breaking into your dorm room led to the four of you meeting literal gods and embracing their power you have accepted divinity into your heart and as such you four have become the saviors the protectors of north point academy the prestigious uh, and very strangely named student population, like people have the oddest names at the school, uh, campus. And you have fought against the Phantom Queen and her legion of enemies known as Crows. And you've also fought against her power of unlocking hearts, which releases weird, deformed, evil god beings. Um, but... The four of you have handled it. You have made some allies. You've made some very dear friends. And now, tonight, the night of homecoming, we begin with the four of you at the North Point Cemetery, readying up your last stand against the Phantom Queen. And did she did she really have to choose this night to <sighs> Well, I just wish we could put this off because I've been dreaming of homecoming all year. <laughs> Kim the ghost looks up from uh, the dirt she's been drawing in. 
Yeah, well, sorry, but there is a missing kid involved now. So there'll be other homecomings for you, not for me. I'm dead. All right. I'm sorry, Kim. My apologies. Eh, don't be. It's fine. <sighs> so what exactly is the plan here? Well, I guess we have to figure out some way to get the Phantom Queen to even come to the cemetery. Well, she was a goddess of death. But we have to say that thing, right? Um, who? Burn. Uh, burn. Uh, you, you try burning why, it. Why is it burn? Why is it? Why is it burn? Why is it burned? How did it get burned? That's oh, yeah. That's what we said. <laughs> is how that not what we said? What? Yeah. How about what? Where? So anyway. <laughs> anyway. I want to know what everyone is wearing. Me yes, personally. Because it me is very cold and it's also homecoming tonight. Tell me what pretty things you're wearing. No, Aki, you started this. What what's Manny wearing? Oh, wear wearing a very nice suit. Like, like looking very, very posh. It's a, a nice button up that's kind of open. There is no tie involved and like a very, very, you know, style and blazer, probably in a nice like olive green and, you know, slacks. Like they're, they're pulling off Yacht Boy really well right now. Like they're doing like the whole Yacht Boy nine yards, but like instead of like cheap chinos, it's like really nice, like uh, sort of a tan, tan slacks and, uh, uh, nice wingtip shoes. It's very, it's a little, it's a slightly upscale yacht boy. Yeah. <laughs> wow. I love it. Dahlia, how about you? Dahlia wearing the aforementioned Phantom of the Opera gown, the very big, boofy white one with the corset top and it hangs off her shoulders. It's definitely a little too long for her because she wasn't Christine. So that costume wasn't made for her when they did Phantom of the Opera. It's a little too long. So she does keep tripping over it as they're walking around the cemetery. Is it from the part where she, where Christine's like on the boat? Yeah, it's when she's oh, like halfway part. submerged she's in the like, water. Ugh. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> that part. Okay, great. <laughs> and she's got she's wearing hair extensions. She went the full nine yards thinking oh, this will be quick. We could get this over with and then we'll go to homecoming and maybe I'll be able to see my crush. <sighs> Spiro. 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 Yes. Oh, Spiro. <laughs> All right. Our very, uh, our very good bad boy. Yes. Uh, how about Iris? Oh, she's still wearing, she's wearing that Hannibal Lecter thing. The, <laughs> the, like... <laughs> The straight jacket? <laughs> no, the, yeah, it's so a little. The, like, you know, when in, in the show Hannibal, when he's like killing people, but he wants to keep wearing oh. his nice suits. Yeah. It's the like slicker thing, but it like is tailored to the suit that she's wearing underneath. Um, so she's wearing that, but <laughs> she's got it a little bit unzipped. Oh. So she's sure. kind of feeling a little bit more comfortable. And she's not wearing little booties. It's just the pants with the, like, <laughs> it's not plastic booties or gloves. Nice. Wow. And how about, Le how about Lenny? Uh, Lennox is wearing a powder blue suit with uh, mm -hmm. the black trim around, like, where the collar and stuff is. Uh, uh, black button-up shirt with a, uh, a powder blue uh, bow tie. And he's got very nice, like, brand new Nikes, but he is wearing booties on because, like, he's wearing his shoes. <laughs> oh, yeah, and, and we're in the mud. In, yeah, we're yeah. in the cemetery. Yeah. <laughs> you're, wearing little, you're wearing my booties. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Iris' booties. I love that. I love that. Everybody oh. cleaned up real nice. I agree. Oh, real quick. Thanks to Feg's uh, 252 and mini marker. We have unlocked our first two tiers. Now, the first one is re rolls for the table. So we have oh, five re rolls available uh, for the table. It's the only way these guys get re rolls. I don't give re rolls to subs. Subs get you immortalized in game. And we've also reached our uh, second tier, which is a draw from the tarot deck. So I'm just going to go ahead and give this a quick hand shuffle. Oops, that doesn't count. Still learning how to do this. 
I played a lot of Magic the Gathering. You think after a while I'd be good at this. I'm really not. And we have drawn the chariot upright. Exquain? <laughs> All right, work. So, Lenny, Lennox, uh, I throw it to you. How is this going to go incredibly well? You get to narrate this. Okay, so. Lennox turns to Iris and goes, well, I mean, like, isn't Kali's ho whole domain, like, death or whatever? Like, what if, what if, like, I don't know, Kali, like, could, like, create, like, I don't know, like, a vor swirling vortex of death that's, like, so immense that, like, even, even the Phantom Queen, like, can't <gasps> ignore it or whatever. Yes, it would be so alluring that she couldn't possibly look away. Okay. Kali... The dark cloud of Kali appears behind you. Oh, Iris, you've had some plans before, but this one, this I enjoy very much. Okay, take it away. Okay, so I need you to uh, spend an AP point. Thank you. And let's make this intelligence and power. Okay, I am realizing that I don't have my character sheet up and I'm pulling it up right now and I'm vamping for time and here we go. It's here. Okay. All right. Uh, and <laughs> Lennox, my favorite song. Uh, such a great idea. What bonus are you going to give her? Ooh. Um, I I don't know how do bonuses work in this game. You just uh, give him a plus to the roll. Hmm? As this, as the system is very similar to Savage Worlds or games of that ilk, we're just going for high numbers. So you can just add on to the roll. It could be anywhere between one to seven. Well, then I'm going to add a seven. Right? <laughs> yeah, hold on. I just threw out those numbers. I did not actually care what numbers you picked. But yes. Okay, Iris, go ahead and roll me intelligence and power with a plus seven. Wow. Okay. Wow. So intelligent. So intelligent. E e. Okay. Uh, fifteen plus seven is uh twenty two. Two. Yes. I know this because fourteen plus seven is twenty one. I always have my ones that I know. Yeah, you know the one, and then you're like, okay, so then the next one is yeah. is this? Yeah. Okay. So I was not good at math at school. That's how I managed to survive. <laughs> All right. Um. So here's a fun thing. Anything above a 20 is pretty much, uh, for lack of a better term, god tier. So, uh, Kelly, what does this look like? Um, so, to Kali, it looks like, okay, to anybody that's looking at it, if you look into the vortex, you see your entire life. Um, and then if you look at it too long, it starts going like into how your life will be, but then the pull gets stronger and stronger as you look at it. Um, and if you stay to look at how your full life will go until the end, you get sucked into it. That is horrifying. Thank you. You're um, absolutely welcome. Yeah. So you have effectively made a, how am I going to die machine? <laughs> Um, all right. I need intelligence rolls from everyone to not look at it. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> just intelligence? Yeah. Yeah. I'm oh, just looking dear. for a three. <gasps> Wait, was I supposed to also do it? I, I not one. What? I, I also <laughs> not one. <laughs> no. That is crazy. I got a two. <laughs> Would you guys like to use the rerolls? How many do Is we it have? too soon to use a reroll? No, considering, I mean, it's only twenty minutes into the episode, but sure. How we also have, have to warn the ding dang phantom queen. Hmm? Did Iris say, "Hey, don't look at this," or did Iris just go like, "Hey, Kali, let's do this thing"? <laughs> Because then everyone's going to be like, whoa. From, from how I rolled, I assume Iris was like, don't look at. Uh. <laughs> Just like the deadlight scene. Yeah. It's a bit of the deadlight scene from it, too. 
Yeah. Okay. Um, um, maybe we use our rerolls. <laughs> Are we gonna maybe die? Otherwise, we're die? all in trouble. I mean, I think I think I was just a one v one. I feel like at least Manny needs to use this reroll. Yeah. Um, because I feel like, yeah, it matches like. Both? Yeah. I'm All right. Gonna this time it was gonna, four. I got a six okay. that time. Uh, All right. All right. Okay. I'm going to keep the two. <laughs> okay. I have a question to ask the GM, and I'm trying not to make this meta e, but I am. <laughs> Is Iris going to die if I don't re roll? Um, what did Iris get? One. I'm not going to kill you guys. You will take a condition. I'm horribly traumatized. Two. Okay. Um, so we've used two rerolls and we... Yeah, three left. Okay, I'm... Uh... Okay, I'll take the condition. I'll take the condition. Because we have All to right. fight the Phantom Queen. Yeah. Maybe oh, right. Alia will uh, offer some support to their friends. <laughs> like Madoka, Magica, or Higarashi, oh, or no. Umi Echo, where you start reading it, and it's kind of cute. It's like, oh, happy, fun animation. You turn the page, and suddenly it's a fucking Junji Ito drawing. Like, <laughs> oh my god. This is, uh, it is the final fight in Madoka, or that, or I guess anything in Evangelion. It's just, oh lord, that that's a nightmare page. Um, <laughs> This void was made for me. It's perfectly fit. Yeah, for this my is body. like playing Doki Doki. <laughs> Lenny, you're staring into this thing and you're seeing, oh no, you don't have a choice. Life is on a set path. Everything's predetermined. You are going to be just like your father one day, and it is hell. Um, Iris, you are seeing, oh no, you're not going to get better. You're going to be a hermit for the rest of your life, and it is terrible. And everyone's going to die, and you're going to die. And, uh, then eventually, Kali just kind of whacks you upside the head, like, snap out of it. Oh, oh. One step forward, two steps back. Yes, both of you now have the condition traumatized. Oh, lovely. <laughs> now this is not a, this. It's it was a scary moment, but uh, you both know Kali is a bit dramatic at times, and also uh, destiny is not a thing. But if you do roll below a two. On a junction, that means when you use your, you know, divinity, you will be traumatized. And that means your strength, dexterity, intelligence, and charisma will go down one die size. Okay. Uh, this is if we roll below a two for something. Yes. Okay. You know, I got, I got like, say, Iris, mm. I think it's... Pretty dope, but also like Hecka messed up. Never do that again. It's like Hecka is super messed up. I'm sorry. Oh, no, good oh, job. Oh, thank you. I just, I guess in power, there's also truth. And the truth is that everything is inevitable. Yeah. You guys are looking at it? I couldn't stop. Well, my brain I won't let me. Yeah, I saw Iris said, don't look at it. And then, and then, then just kind of went slack. And then I wasn't sure what Iris meant. So I looked and then, and then I saw all possibilities at once and became one with, with, with the universe, but also nothing at the same time. Yeah. This it's kind of means... messed up though. Ninkasa lets out a laugh. <laughs> yeah. It's the, it's the reality knife. We all see it. Doesn't mean anything. Are you are you still looking at it? Uh I it's not there anymore, but every time I close my eyes, it's all I see. But apart from that, I'm I, think I'm of okay. something else, Lenny. I can't. It's uh totally occupying my mind, but uh Well, because um all we have is the present, so I have always been looking at it, and I always will be looking at it. <sighs> yeah, it's like an ever present uh figure that is always behind me but you know i'll suppress it like everything else in my life 
You know what else is an ever-present figure? The Phantom Queen. And I'm going to need both of you right here if we're going to make it to homecoming. We all need to work together. No reality knife stuff. We got to kick her butt so I can go to homecoming and see Spiro. We like to know what your motivations are up front, Dahlia. That's very important. <laughs> well, also to, to give Kim a rest and to save everyone in the school. That too. As this portal continues to swirl overhead, uh, eventually Ninkasa takes form and just kind of puts a leaf in front of your face, Lenny. <laughs> and Kali just whacks you upside the head with a get over it, Iris. Because uh, Kali is not exactly the nice one in the group. As death and uh, certainty floats overhead, eventually it begins to touch down like a silent uh, tornado. And from that, you see a door, the same door you used last time to enter the key room. I've never seen this door before. <laughs> um, it doesn't look familiar to me either. Does it look familiar to? Does it look familiar to Manny? Is this a door that Manny has seen before? Uh, I'm pretty sure this is the door to Oblivion. Oh right. So speaking of Oblivion. Yeah. Stop it's it. It's Kali. The ominous nature of this door is somewhat lessened by the intense dread I'm feeling at, at all moments. Nothing matters. So the only thing that matters is what we do. Nothing really matters. Anyone can see. Sorry. My, my, my parents really like that song. I like it too. It's pretty cool. It's all right. Ma'at, what can you show me? Anything important about this thing? I mean, it's the door to oblivion, but why is it here? Um, go ahead and roll me power intelligence. I will do that. Power plus intelligence. Woo! -hoo. Ooh, that's a 10. All right. Uh, that is more than good enough. We were looking for a 7. Uh, so... What was your exact question? Uh, why is the door here? And what possibly brought it to this place? Well, the door is always associated with the Phantom Queen. And the Phantom Queen used to be the Morrigan, the uh, Gaelic goddess of death. Um, best you can tell, you're summoning not just her, but her entire little playroom where the keys were and all that jazz. Do we see the cabinet of keys? No, not yet. Um, I think Manny also starts looking around to see if Loki is nearby. Okay. Where where the Phantom Queen is and all of her things, Manny does not feel as though Loki is too far behind. So. Yep. Uh, go is ahead it... and why don't you give me intelligence roll? Oh, that'll go well. Yeah. Two. Yeah, you do not see Loki. Mm, okay. Well, I think this is a good sign that we have definitely gotten the Phantom Queen's attention. I don't imagine that she will go, uh, she will want, uh, <clears throat> sorry, words are hard right now. You all look so nice. It's making me feel very confused. Anyway, I don't think that the Morrigan will be happy to notice that the Door is gone and we'll try to go wherever the door is. So we probably can expect her soon. What Manny yeah. said. <laughs> Sorry, I was just thinking, I saw the face of someone who called himself the king of love. His name was Malcolm. And I had to feed him gravel. Sorry, I'm I'm a, I'm here now. Are you okay, Lenny? No, not in the slightest. Uh, you want to talk about it? No, I want to forget it. Why? 
you do realize that suppressing the truth inside yourself will only make you sick at heart. It'll make you unstable, too, as a person. And besides, where are your friends? If you can't talk to us, who can you talk to? Exactly. That being said, if you do not feel comfortable talking right now, you do not have to. You can tell us in your own time. But please know we are here for you and we support you. And I I appreciate that. Like it's it's comforting to know that like y'all are here to like be my buds. But at the moment, I'm just really looking forward to fighting something and and getting out my emotions that way. It's not the healthiest way, but I figure, you know, it's my way currently. Yep. As long as you're willing to acknowledge that. This uh, door is the one that Dolly wasn't around for, right? So she would have no idea. What Dahlia, that? Would, Dahlia had not seen this door, no. Do you have any questions, Dahlia? I realize you weren't there the day we saw this thing. Um, I, I feel like you would have told me something important if there was something super important like rules. Like, don't touch this or you'll die an instant death. So you I feel like not try to touch it, and I don't think I would recommend the attempt. Yeah, if you try and touch them, you go to mouse jail. Where? Uh, mouse. from your backpack, uh, pop. Actually, I do have to ask. Uh, how did you bring Orpheus to this one? Oh God! <laughs> Is he a purse bunny? He's a purse bunny. I'm wearing like a sling bag purse mm. that fits the outfit. Uh, popping out of your purse, wearing the Phantom of the Mat Opera. Oh, uh, uh, he's mask. the Phantom. Christine! Yeah, a little cape. Okay, great. <laughs> you are his angel of music. Sing. I mean, I, I just, I'm mostly an accessory. I complete the outfit. Uh, no, but uh, listen, listen. Um, uh, don't touch it. No, you won't die. You'll go to Squirrel Jail. Possibly. Thank you, Lennox. But uh, you won't die. Um, uh, um, Squirrel jam. I'm very glad I asked then. Um, okay. Oh, no. I'm don't starting to remember it. things. Yeah. And, yeah. Oh, uh, Orpheus, don't look at the thing that Iris made. Look oh, away. no. It won't affect me. It won't affect me. I know this okay, won't affect perfect. me. I'm realizing a lot of things very suddenly. Um, as he says that, suddenly there's lightning in your tornado, Iris. Um, it's so beautiful. Stop looking at it, Iris. Stop. Uh, no, no, no. Iris, the embodiment of anxiety, can't <laughs> stop doom spiraling. What a shock. I'm, she's gonna like s s walk kind of closer to it. Iris, Iris, stop. stop. Um, stop. and Iris, I need to make a dexterity roll as keys begin to rain down. Yee! Okay, dex. Did you say keys? <laughs> Did keys. somebody say keys? And sorry, it was it was squirrel jail, not mouse jail. I don't like there's something cursed happening. Uh -oh. There's something cursed as I have rolled a one yet again. Oh no. We have one reroll, right? We have three rerolls left. Oh. Here's a reroll. Yeah, I'll use one of them. I'm gonna banish this this situation. Okay, over here. New one, new one. Yeah! 10. All right. Um, On a D10, by the way. Very nice. And if we had a certain tip tier tonight, it would have exploded. But so. <laughs> uh, yes, this key comes crashing down into the earth and you snap out of it just in time to avoid it. Um, and you realize keys are falling down and you also see white bricks coming down as well. You haven't just summoned the black the the Phantom Queen. You've summoned the door to oblivion and the key room itself. It is taking physical form here in the cemetery. Whoa! Everyone, try to remember really quick the format of that room, and then try and go in a place where there aren't keys. She's gonna like try and sprint to like a spot that she like remembers that was like an open area. Where do I go? Uh, it wasn't there. Oh, no, Dahlia. Uh, Dahlia, you, um, Orf Orpheus jumps out of his bag onto your shoulder. 
Quick, just head right there, take a left, and three steps to the right, okay? Oh, my God, we're like Ratatouille right now, okay? <laughs> Lenny's going to stand still, and he goes, whatever is going to happen has already happened, so uh, I, there's no need to avoid something that's going to happen. Lenny, roll me dexterity. Okay. Let's for see. three. Okay, well, we'll see how well that does for you. Uh, why... Why do I even? No, it's a natural one. Of course it is. <gasps> no, and we are, you're traumatized. No. What did you do to us tonight, Stephen? This is it's very It's the bad. final battle. It's the final we all just battle. We'll just take a breather. Connect with our dice. Okay. All right. Is, them. The problem Talk is, them. I, I try to, because I tell myself, I'm going to use physical dice. No oh. digital dice for me. I'm going to use these nice, pretty physical dice, and they always roll ones. Well, one literally just tried to run away from you, so maybe <laughs> yeah. like, don't like, like free me. <laughs> <laughs> the truth will shield you. Come back here with me. I would like to build a shield wall. All right, um, Lenny. But since Lenny failed the roll, Lennox takes two damage as he gets conked on the forehead by a key. Oh, ow! Gives him that cool <laughs> anime cut. All right. I can it can can I like what happens is Lenny's like whatever's happened's already happened and then the key falls on him and it goes kadong and he does like a hundred percent that all right uh Manny it sounds like you're trying to build a uh truth and uh a truth justice wall. wall a wall of truth that we can hide behind. Wonder 1521, thank you for the bits. Okay, yeah, um, that's definitely, you are a guardian. That is your role. Um, yeah. As you're making this, go ahead and give me defense and strength. Defense and strength. Defense and, and spend strength. the AP. Defense Whenever you use your divinity, you spend the AP. What is my strength? There it is. Okay. Do, 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 do. Hacha. 14. 14, you, uh, go ahead and describe it because you've built one hell of a wall. Okay, so uh, Manny, a little bit slow on the jump as they're realizing what exactly is happening because, you know, in their mind, the keys are good things. They are not something that we should necessarily be worried about. But then they see the key that conks Lenny in the head and go, oh, right, keys raining down, made of metal, probably not very safe. <laughs> And like these big astral wings come up from the ground and like surround us, like the wings of Ma'at burst from the ground, like, you know, white shimmery energy that kind of forms a bubble around us. And it's like that cool little swirly thing that happens in an anime. It's like, whoo, like, yeah, like that. Oh, we are. It's what it's the Sakuga hitch just right. The budget was spent properly on this episode. So, Manny, you create these uh, wings of protection, and they protect all of you as these uh, keys continue to rain down. Dahlia, you're still being ratatouille a bit by uh, Orpheus, and he knows almost exactly how this room is built, down to the brick. Um, are you taking his advice? Are you listening to him as he shouts out directions and movements? Oh, oh, absolutely. Yeah. Um, you see as these wings uh, encompass you, you are standing in front of the door directly where nothing can touch you. And as the storm goes silent and the keys stop raining down, um, you are in the piercing white room of the key room with the door of oblivion in front of you. Floating in front of it, uh, her arms outstretched and her head limp is Mandy Murphy. She's a senior at North Point. I, she's not part of any club you belong to. She's uh, part of the... Uh, She's part of the, um, crap, I had this written down. I'm going to start my nose. Ah, 
She's part of the Historic Preservation Society with uh, Captain Obvious, M. Jason O., Savage Punch, and Nightshade88. Um, none of you have had a relationship with her, and why she would be picked is a mystery in and of itself, but there she is, and you have found her. Um, guys? Yeah? What what's going on? Um, uh, Mandy's here. Did we see her come into the cemetery? No. <gasps> Was she in the room? And then when and then when Iris conjured the room here, did she also conjure Mandy here? And now Mandy's here with us. And uh, there's something happening. There was a missing student. Maybe Mandy is the missing student. No, she definitely room. is. Huh? What? Huh? She was in the key room all along, and when Iris did her thing with the reality knife that I'm, I didn't look at, it brought me in here. Oh. And so we, we technically found her, but she's still being, con like, there's something happening to her. Uh, do you think you can help her? I don't know. You told me not to touch the door, and I'm really close to the door. Do you have to go through the door to get to her? No, she is in front of the door. The door remains closed. Then I think it's okay as long as you're careful. I mean, let's see if we oh. can. I'm gonna try to ask Persephone. Try. I'm gonna ask Persephone uh, to let me shoot out some vines to try to grab Mandy and pull her towards me instead of me going towards her. All right. Uh, go ahead. Spend an AP, and this will be a range and dexterity roll. Okay. I got a 15. Okay, that is perfect. Um, you, from your wrist, uh, they don't come out of your wrist, obviously, but, you know, kind of like a Kamehameha or yeah. a Spider-Man. Uh, you shoot out these vines, and they wrap around Mandy, and you pull her towards you. Uh, she's a little taller than you, and as you see her, she is uh, she's not bad looking. And you have effectively taken her off whatever was holding her up. Uh, she goes limp in your arms, but she is breathing normally. You are uh, at least comforted by the fact that she is not dead. But then you hear the cold, stony voice of the Phantom Queen. Put her back. I'm sorry, I cannot do that. And I need everyone to roll initiative oh, as the yeah. Phantom Queen appears above the uh, door to oblivion. Can you remind me again what speed initiative is? Speed, speed plus dex. Speed, 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 speed plus dex. Yes, and it does not cost an AP. Ha cha cha. Eight. Ten. Nine. Eleven. We're all very close. Yes. All right. So Lenny at 11. Iris at a 10. Or was it Manny at a 10? Manny has the 10. I have the right. 9. Okay. Uh, Dahlia, what'd you get? 8. 8, oh, 9, 10, 11. We did it. Wow. We got that, that nice straight flush. All right. Um, Except I don't think any of us are straight, so there we go. <laughs> okay, so uh, she has a 16, and so she will be going first in initiative. Um, she doesn't look like how she used to look. She's still bone white with those red blood-like splotches all over her, and her face elongated into almost a crown shape. But the jaw has extended and pointed. The teeth have gnarled. The eyes have sunken. Uh, the fingers have extended. Everything about her looks more animalistic and, well, scary. And she spits at you, Dahlia. Put her back! And she's going to make a dive at you. Somebody needs a hug. Oh, boy, she got a 20 on her hit. That is definitely going to hit. Dahlia, what's your defense? Um, I 
rolled a nine. Oh, holy crap. <laughs> that is amazing. All right. So you are only going to take five. Okay. Um, as she comes at you, and there is no sense of decorum or like strategy here. This is pure violence as she comes at you, slicing. Uh, Dahlia, how do you defend yourself? Um, well, I'm holding Mandy, so I'm actually going to turn around and like cover over her and hope that the boning of my corset can take some of the blunt of this bro blow. It actually does. It takes a good bit of the damage. It's very good. Um, you also notice your purse feels a little lighter. Yes. Uh, Tony, thank you very much for the tip. Uh, next up in the order, we'll go to Lenny at with an 11. Okay. I Lenny is going to see the Phantom Queen take a slice at Dahlia. Uh, he's going to basically jump, try and jump across the room, turn into a puddle of liquid, and then kind of like form up like in front of Dahlia as like a like a, a wall of, of liquid to just like block. All right. Um, this doesn't sound so much an attack as you're trying to create a defense. Yeah. So go ahead and have this be your dexterity. Actually, you're not very, you're being strength. So strength and defense. All right. Strength and defense, which is not very high, but that's fine because I got a 17. 17, goddamn. Yeah, I'm that friend doing guardian things. Manny is so proud. Absolutely works. Uh, she is going to take a huge detriment of water wall eight. Basically, she has to roll over an eight for anything to happen. Which, knowing how we roll on this show, is a big ask. Um I've seen you die at least seven times. <laughs> I've seen many realities. Uh, all right, Manny, Emancipation Brown, you're up next. The floor is yours. All right. They summon their sword, their sword of truth, their blade of honesty, and they are going to dash across the room, leap into the air, and they are going to, what are we supposed to say again? Hmm? What is the magic? Uh, bur bur how did you bur burn it? How did, how did it burn? How did, it burn? How did it burn? As they leap into the air with their sword above their head, uh, they want to infuse the sword with the words, how did it burn? <laughs> and try and slice through the Raven Queen with it. Just All right. Like, uh, this going is... Going for it. You are going for it. Like Manny saw the opportunity. Manny is taking it. So go ahead and give me strength and defense plus two, as you are definitely doing an, an attack. Oh, God, what am I doing? Actually, you know what? Scratch that. I want strength and defense plus four. Strength and defense plus four. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Here we go. I'm hail marrying it very early on in the session. We'll see how it goes. Uh, 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 thank God for the plus four. Um, That's a 13. That's not going to hit. That's what I figured. That being said, I, I would like for the sword to be infused with those words in the in the event that I maybe hit at some other point. No, I'm actually, I'm totally going to let you keep that for the rest of the uh, combat. I think that was a very clever idea. Almost as if like it's emblazoned across the, the fuller of the blade. Like, you know how some blades have like the cool etchings and runes and stuff in them? That's mm -hmm. how the true sword looks right now. Yes, the true sword currently has a Nicolas Cage meme. It's just a very, very la 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 large, large sword. Yes. Um, oh, boy. Oh, thank you, chat. Thank you very much. I love huh? you terribly. What did they uh, what Manny, happen? Manny, you get bounced off the uh, Phantom Queen. It's You don't take any damage, obviously, but she just pushes you away. She is not afraid of your damage. And that's when you see someone... Uh, you actually recognize this person. Their name is Splubble. Uh, they're a member of the Occult Club, and they're not alone. 
Oh, God. See, in the back of your mind, Manny, you recall that, all oh, right, the occult club, cemetery, homecoming, or any dance, this is what they do. Oh, God. So we have collateral damage coming. Great. Yes, you do. Uh, yes, so. you see Splubble and Kinfer, Lonnie, J Rex, 0711. You're pretty sure his family founded the 7-Eleven, but he that they never make it clear. Explorer Rowan and Luop 82517. All of them are here and they look terrified. Thanks, chat. Why are you here? Go home. Go ahead we can't ask them where we are. One of them calls out. <laughs> You're at the cemetery. Go back to the dance. Uh, the club president removes his hood. Uh, I forgot I named him this. Alpha Four Stradovich de Palma Fourth of the Frozen Rose, a.k.a. Alfred Peterson, uh, removes his hood. We weren't going to the dance tonight. It's a full moon. We were going to be summoning stuff. Where are we? What's going on? Just stay back. Listen, oh, as, a, as you're the resident advisor of at least three of you, I am handling the situation. Please stay out of the way. Did he turn into water? <laughs> All right. So next up in initiative uh, is Iris. This is fine. Everything's just fine. Okay. How dare you, chat? So I love you. Iris. <laughs> Iris is going to start to ask Kali to like put a little um universe in her hand and she like looks at it and then like sees that there's a bunch of other kids now and that she's very bad at controlling the damage. So she's gonna like close it and then be like. I think it's time for me to be brave. And she's going to take off the uh, the plastic outside mm -hmm. of her suit and like take it off and then just like try to walk up to the Phantom Queen and do something that truly frightens Iris and give her a hug. Okay. It's not going to go well. I've been rolling terribly. <laughs> I want you to roll charisma with a plus 10. Whoa! Okay. A chance, perhaps. We believe in you. Oh, wait. I, I upgraded. I'm no longer at a D4. I get to roll a D6. Okay. Okay. Hmm. Uh, two. But uh, plus the 14. So that's 16? Plus the... 14 or for the 10? 10. 10. I'm sorry, plus the 10. So that's, that's a 12 then. 12. 12. Yes. Um, she begins trembling in your arms almost as much as you probably are, Iris. <laughs> and she stops. And you feel blood dripping down from her <gasps> eye onto you. And you realize this is her crying. Does the blood hurt me? No. Okay. It's just gross. Oh. Oh! Ew! Um, but also, let it out! <laughs> but she's gonna keep holding her. Oh, it's like, so breathe through your mouth! Breathe through your mouth! <laughs> Biohazard, she's bleeding on me! <laughs> But you're um, wearing your little slicker. No, I Not took it know. off. I took <laughs> off the slicker. And she's like looking at the slicker on the ground and she's like, no. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> My one true love, the slicker. <laughs> I just. Um, <sighs> yes, you. She continues to tremble and twitch. And Iris, you notice she stops looking like the Phantom Queen for a moment. For a very brief moment, she looks like a woman made entirely of black feathers. Um, it's almost beautiful. And then she like snaps back to this pointed bone white creature and she pushes you off and she looks 
very confused. I'm going to say she has conflicted uh, six on top Ooh. of the bar wall eight. Okay. So am I now like on the ground, like next to her? You are right next to her. You have some blood splatter on you. And she keep all of you can see it now. She keeps shifting between the original Phantom Queen, this horrifyingly beautiful creature and this feral rabid monster and this woman made entirely of feathers and sometimes gold it looks like and she just can't be all three at once doll i am so fucking proud of iris right now i am having uh my baby did something <laughs> moment i am sorry dahlia uh let's see Dahlia was the bottom of the initiative, so now it's the Phantom Queen's turn. Did Dahlia get to go? I didn't go. Dahlia oh, didn't get to go. Oh, Dahlia's, has... oh, Dahlia's the last. I thought Iris was last. I no. apologize. Yes, Mika, yes, it is Dahlia's turn. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm bad at my job. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's okay. Um, Dahlia is going to try to get... Uh, I forgot her name. I know it starts with an M. Mandy, 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 Mandy Patinkin. Patinkin. <laughs> Dolly is going to uh, run Mandy over to the occult club and kind of shove her into one of their arms. I don't really have time to explain, but she was missing. I need you to keep her safe. All right. And then she's going to step back and like do this wave of her hand and uh, call on Persephone to engulf them in a big ball of hickory root because hickory is the uh, hardest wood. It's extremely hard to chop through and get through. And so she's trying to encase them in something with Persephone's powers to keep them from getting got. All right. I love that. Go ahead and give me a, uh, I'm going to say charisma defense role for this one and spend an AP. Oh, oh, I rolled the wrong dice. That was, oh, that was about to be sad. I got an eight. An eight. Okay. Uh, you, you and Persephone, you're a little distracted because uh, the boning and the stress is a little messed up. And you also kind of boo-boo. And where's Orpheus? Um, you make the cage. And uh, it's not as strong as you'd like. Uh, but you got a, you said an eight, right? Yes. Okay, you've made a cage with a strength of eight, so she'll have to roll and get an eight or better to attack it. Um, all right, so now it's the Phantom Queen's turn. And actually, it's not her turn. Hmm? It's Orpheus's turn. Hmm. Uh, seemingly out of nowhere, Orpheus comes diving at the Phantom Queen, and he is attempting to rip off her crown. Orpheus. Come on, come on. Oh, oh no, he rolled really time. bad. She grabs him and she flings him and you see as Orpheus goes flying and he hits the one of the walls. The keys come crashing down behind him. His mask falls off. And all of you oh. see for a brief moment he doesn't look like a bunny. He looks like a crow. What the heck is going on? The Phantom Queen is now up. She is going to, still shaking, still concerned, still having this crisis thanks to Iris because she still remembers being loved and she still remembers a lot about who she was. Uh, she's going to try to destroy the cage Dahlia has made and she, she failed. I rolled a seven on 2d12. I rolled a seven. She failed. I have to accept this. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm very surprised. It's 2d12. I'm not surprised. <laughs> Take the dab. You deserve the dab. I'm not going to argue about the dab. <laughs> Foiled once again. <laughs> and actually, um, because of the water wall, 
she actually can't do anything. Letty is still holding her from doing anything. I love this song. <laughs> so, Lenny, you are in a great spot because you just keep on water, water, water wall. After <laughs> all, here's water wall. Anyway, here's water wall. <laughs> uh, after all, uh, <laughs> all right. So, Lenny, it's your turn. You have. The Phantom Queen, maybe not on the ropes, but she is definitely not where she thought she would be in this fight. So Especially not where the GM thought she'd be in this fight. I imagine, like, I've got this water wall, and I'm kind of, like, in front of it, protecting everyone behind me. And, like, as she, like, she'll go to, like, slice at me, uh, it'll turn out to just be made of water, and I'll appear somewhere else. And, uh, well, it's beer, but we're saying water because I'm a child. Uh, but, and, and like... Because, because we have the four kids, well, though. Mean, yeah. Some- some, you know, some beers might as well be water, so. Yeah, yeah. It's, oh, shots fired from Aki. Yeah, it's, a, it's Bud Light Lime, which is basically nothing. I love Bud Light it's Lime. I am favorite. thriving when I'm drinking Bud Light Lime. It is nasty, and I know it. But I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. It, like, tastes like oh. watered-down Sprite. and yes. I, I'm like <laughs> flat, watered-down Sprite. <laughs> Mika's face is how I feel on the inside right now. I <laughs> love it. I, I, don't I apologize. I didn't alcohol. realize I was attacking so many people with those with my comments. No, I didn't realize I, that my comments I were hurting people. Trash. I know it is. I also like any beer that advertises that it tastes like fruit. I do. I I don't care. I'm I'm a trash queen. I don't yeah. care. Yeah. Live your truth. Yeah. Fair enough. Yeah. Do you want to put yourself through drinking beer? Be my guess. Actually, it makes me really gassy, so I try not to. <laughs> I've never heard that before. It that, does. That's, oh, that's but if I do, I'm drinking Bud Light Lime. <laughs> oh, God. All right, Lenny. I love it. All right, okay. Lenny. What are you going to do? So Lenny is is sort of like like – like beer version of Lenny is is like like basically bouncing around taunting the Phantom Queen, uh, and then like as she's getting frustrated, uh, I would like to um, he he like takes he forms himself in the center again, but he no longer looks like Lenny. He looks like Kim, and he just said it. it starts saying, "How did it get burned?" Okay, all right. Uh, this is. A very smart move from Lenny. I'm going to need Charisma. Mm. And since we're definitely using Ninkasa, uh, we're going to make this Charisma. And um, how does Defense sound? Okay, sure. Uh, let's see. Defense. All right. Because you're not so much attacking her as you are trying to emotionally ruin her. Okay. I mean, it's not. It's It's a six. It's not the best thing I've ever rolled. All right, um, that is going to, let's see. Now, she already had Conflicted 6. I feel like we should just add on to that. So I'm going to go ahead and make Conflicted 6, Conflicted 7. So if she rolls a 7 or lower, she deals with the water wall and how conflicted she feels right now. You guys are in a good spot. All right, uh, after that, we go to Manny. Gonna try and do another slash at her. Do a stab, do a stab. Let's try again, if at first you don't succeed. Uh, stab, mm, stab again. This isn't great, it's just a 11, unless I get to add anything to it. Uh, plus two? Uh, I mean, that's still just a 13. Yeah, that's not gonna hit. Manny, you attempt to slash at her, and she's... It's because sometimes she's like a human, and sometimes a bird thing, and sometimes a horrible emancipated... Uh, emancipated? Emaciated. Emaciated, thank you. What the fuck? I mean, Those are I'm two the very one. different words. Your <laughs> emancipation. Yes. <laughs> I'm sorry. You're it's fine, sometimes... bro. Sometimes an emaciated skeleton creature from hell. So it's just hard. Why won't you stay still? 
All right, Iris, you're up next. Is the thing that the the swirling like reality knife thing is that still going on? Um, not that you can see. Uh, you is it like outside of the? It's outside of the key room. Okay. Hmm, 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 hmm. There's no windows in the key room. No, just keys. Poopy. Okay. Um. Okay, I'm going to uh Hmm. I don't know if I want to go straight into like a battle thing after what I've been through with her. I think um Oh, I'm going to try to create another one of those uh like I don't know if I, I I don't know if I'm gonna be able to. I'm gonna try and create another reality. What did you call it? Reality. I call it the reality knife. The reality knife. I'm gonna try and create another one, but just small, like just small enough that like only she and I could see it. Like it would be in between us. All right. And I want to say like, look, and like point at it. Okay. Um, this is going to be intelligence and power. Okay. Power. Okay. Also, just to let the chat know, we are about, uh, 25 bucks away from drawing from the deck again. Just saying. Uh, 17. 17. Okay. Um, so... You create this reality knife, the one that shows the past, what it is, the future, what it could be, and the present, what is now. And Iris, you get to see the Morrigan as she was. So I get to see it. You is were she... looking at it too. Okay. You're both looking at it. Okay. Um, you're <laughs> wonder 1521. Thank you very much for the tip. Um, you look into this galaxy, this void that you create, and you're seeing the Morrigan, and you're seeing the many women. For some reason, she only seems to work with women. Mm -hmm. uh, throughout history, she has teamed up with, and you see her with this creature that almost reminds you of Ninkasa. It's frivolity and celebration and strength and alcohol. Um, and they look so happy. And then you see him disintegrate. You see him vanish. And then you see the door of oblivion and you see its long, dark shadow swallow her whole and create what she is now. And you see the reality where you guys just beat the tar out of her and leave her for dead. You see the reality where you decide to go evil and join her side and you're going to destroy everything to open this door. Um, and she is uh, broken. I'm going to say she has broken. What was your role again? A 17. Okay. She now has broken nine. You guys are very good at emotional warfare with my bad guys. We're teens. We're teenagers. <laughs> yeah, that's our shows. first. That's our first act of our first line of defense. All right, um, Dahlia, you're up next. Uh, the Phantom Queen is just entranced, watching this tiny reality knife galaxy void thingy. Um, how far away? Is it to get to Kim's grave or where Kim shows up? Uh, you don't recall it being very far, but it's outside the room. You'd have to find a way out. Hmm. Would there be a way to break down the wall of the room? Um, you could probably force your way out. I'd love to use Persephone's powers to speed up the... Um, like natural breakdown of elements in that way, in the way vegetation overtakes man-made buildings. I love it. 
Uh, go ahead and give me uh, strength and power. Spend the AP point, of course. I got a six. All right. Um, it begins to work. However, this is a uh, celestial dream being thing covered in keys powered by gods. It's kind of working. You can see some cracks, but maybe if you had like a battering ram to it, it could work. But Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. And now it is Orpheus's turn. Um, he is going to try to, uh, he is running towards one of the walls and he seems to be trying to find a key. He is going to be searching for it for a long time. I rolled a two. <laughs> and he keeps kind of flashing between his adorable rabbit form and a crow version of a rabbit. This, uh, jagged onyx creature. Um, and we go to the top of the order with the Phantom Queen. And she's getting really sick of your shit, Iris. Oh, that's a 17 to hit. But they hugged. Iris is going to be like, I don't like being me either. <laughs> All right. Uh, go ahead and roll me defense. Ay, ay, ay. Okay. I you serious like, like what? Like how? I have not seen so many ones on so many dice before in my it life. It is truly absolutely cursed. Yeah, no. Um they left. No, I'll, I'll I'll leave the How many do we left do we have? 3. Oh, 3? Yeah. I'll I'll take I'll take a reroll. Not a bad call. Yeah. For some reason I thought that we only had a four on a D6. For some reason, I thought we only had one left. Uh, what'd you get? A four on a D6. Okay, you got a four. She got 12, so you will take eight. Wow! Huh! Okay. Uh, how, how's Iris looking right now? Uh, she just halved her uh, AP. Ooh. Or, I mean, her uh, health. HP. HP. Yeah, no. Yeah. Um, with a voice that sounds like four people talking at once, the Phantom Queen screams no and shoves Iris. You go flying into a wall of keys. It's oh. not so much the push so much as the landing that hurts. Uh, Lenny, you're up next. Okay. Lenny forms a watery tornado on his legs to propel him forward and, and punch... At the the uh, Phantom Queen. All right, this is pure magician hit. Uh, mm -hmm. So we're going to go ahead and have you do uh, strength. I'm sorry, uh, intelligence and range minus two. Yep, that would be what I expect. Okay, intelligence, which is that one. Range, which is that one. That'll be a pretty good minus two. So that's a thirteen. That's not going to hit. Okay. Yeah. So he like flies at her like and she literally just like a like, smacks him and it does that thing where it goes Bing! and he just goes poof, poof, and like into like a wall. <laughs> you crash right. Actually, I'm going to say you crash into the uh, cage of Mandy Murphy and a cult club members. Yeah. Hmm? Manny Patinkin. Manny Patinkin. Manny Patinkin. Yeah. Uh, Gen Galaxy and the Posh Panda are there to kind of prevent you from, like, I don't know, crushing your head open. Okay. I have a free action, even though I don't uh, get those. I go, uh, let me just let you know, um, no one's going to believe you, uh, especially because all of you have been drinking. And he's just going to quickly spray them with alcohol <laughs> and then <laughs> jump back into the fight. They're all drenched in beer. They're going to reek like, I don't know how I did my freshman year of college when I thought I could get away with it. Don't do that. Um, all right. Next up, it is Manny's turn. 
All right, just gonna keep trying to get her with the sword. No, not this what? time either. I mean, I only rolled a six plus two, so an eight's not going to be enough. No, no. Yeah, no, Manny, you keep slicing and dicing, and uh, you have left a lot of marks in the ground. And as your sword comes down, it comes down right next to a bright green and orange swirling vortex of a foot. And you recognize it as Loki's. Evening. Oh, uh, hi. I had a feeling you were around here somewhere. Um, you okay? Uh, yes. Um, quick question. Why do you trust me? I don't know. I just do. No, I need to know why you trust me. Because, it's very important. Okay. I trust you because you have proven that even though you're a trickster, ultimately, it's not fun for you to trick people who can't defend themselves. You like to trick people who uh, who can, you know, outmaneuver you and uh, be as clever as you. Otherwise, what's the fun? Except for your, except for your brother Thor, you're you're really just way too hard on him most of the time. But he can also kick your ass, so I guess it's not that bad. But yeah, I, I trust you because I know you like to be challenged. Okay, because I might have to do something very bad tonight, but it's for a good reason. Oh, well, like I said, I trust you. And with that, we are going to move on to Iris. Okay. Um, so Iris is now on the ground. She's not doing well. No. Um, she's going to just like drag herself over to, to the Phantom Queen and just say... <laughs> And, and say over and over again, how did it get burned, Kim? How did it get burned, Kim? How did it get burned? And just like keep crawling up. And she wants to try and just like um, grab the, the Phantom Queen's ankle. And like basically like climb up. So, so that she could be standing next to the fa Phantom Queen, using the Phantom Queen as leverage. Mm -hmm. And then um, try to grab the Phantom Queen's face and turn it to her so that way they're looking at each other. And then she is just going to keep saying, how did it get burned, Kim? How did it get burned? Go ahead, and this is just going to be a straight charisma roll. Okay. Two. Okay. Um, we are going to raise that conflicted from conflicted seven to conflicted eight. Okay. All right. Uh, she is feeling some type of way. You are doing so much emotional damage. Dahlia. Uh, I'm going to hear Iris chanting this over by the Phantom Queen. And... I want to try to help Iris out by making a little wicker doll that is in that scene when he's ch like saying, how did it get burned? And I want to make a little re recreation of this doll from this scene. All right. All right. Uh, go ahead. Spin the AP. This is going to be charisma and power. Uh, I got a nat six on my power and then a six on my uh, charisma, so 12. 12, okay. Um, and I do believe that if you roll double sixes, that's a thing. I believe that's a crit, actually. Is it? Yeah, I, I remember you saying something like regardless that. Regardless of the value of the die, yeah. I believe it's a double six. Yeah. 
Um, let me double check, but I'm pretty sure you are correct. Um, Heck yeah. Yep. Yay. So what are you trying to have accompl have this accomplish? I want to give Iris uh, the doll so it has more impact with her saying how to get burned. Um, and, and the doll's going to look all charred and stuff like it does in that scene. Okay. Um, the doll now, basically you not only create the doll, you managed to almost put a filter over iris um if lenny made the water version of kim you created the photoshopped version of kim um i am actually going to now uh what was your role total 12 12. okay i am actually going to subtract that from the phantom queen's initiative going forward you now only need to roll a four to hit her wow get out of here girl Thank huge you. if true. Huge if true. I need. <laughs> I needed that. I was like, what can I do? <laughs> Thank you. All right. And then a reminder for chat, we are only $15 away from drawing from this deck, which might be very useful right now as we get or to. Or very bad. Or very bad. Might be bad. I doubt <laughs> it. I doubt it. I, doubt I don't it. know. I, I unlocked it and invented the the reality knife so <laughs> the reality knife made it so you guys didn't have to figure out a puzzle or anything so i call that a win anyway uh also we are 19 oh we are 19 uh subscribers away from a uh ghibli is it ghibli or ghibli 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 is ghibli. how you pronounce it yes, ghibli. 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 So, oh. so in, in, in the in proper katakana pronunciation, it is jibbity. Jibbity. Mm. Jibbity. Jibbity. All right. We are 19 subscribers away from a jibbity uh, movie night here on Saving Throw Show. Should be fun. Check it out. But we need your subscribers. And thanks to a ninny moose. A ninny moose. That makes me so happy. I not only said that right on the first time, it just made me happy to say we now have a draw. What, uh, Eric? We don't that 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 that's wild cards thing, man. Okay, you said draw, know. so I you know, we're not firing guns. All right, I'm not comfortable with that. And we drew the high priestess. All right, Iris. Yes. Now, the high priestess is a card representing someone who cares about you and is wise, maybe not completely there yet, but knows more than you believe. Um, the High Priestess will represent uh, Nanako Majima. Yay! And as I, I mean, in my head, I was like, Nanako, Nanako, Nanako. Okay. As, as I drew, uh, you... Okay, you have the birthday party invite in your pocket. I'm going to say that will now be a relic in overarms. Basically on your turn, you can spend it and it will replenish 10 hit points to you and your party. Okay, calculating. And this is, is this 10? Across the board, 10 for everyone. 10s, 10, 10s across the board. 10 each. Yes. Oh my god. Okay. Wow. Okay. Mm-hmm. So thank you, chat. Thank you, chat. You were all worried. You were all like, no, it's gonna be a bad thing. Ah Nanako. Okay. You have a friend in her. All right. Uh it is now uh Orpheus's turn. He is still searching. Um he rolled two ones. He is going to be searching for the rest of this campaign, I fear. All right. Uh, it is now the Phantom Queen's turn, and she is going to attack the uh, cage again. 
Uh, as she does so, she begins to snarl and scream about how she needs that key. Give me your keys. I need that key. Uh, she rolled a 13. So it does destroy your cage. Uh, no? Why, why, why am I getting this? No, no, it doesn't. No, because it doesn't. It yeah. doesn't. But, like, it, it doesn't. It doesn't, huh? Well, the no. dice. Say it did, Let so. me put my hat on. I'm the GM now. <laughs> <laughs> did you just have that ready? <laughs> oh man, that's a great idea. Though it's like when we become when we get when we get the the, the, the hat yeah. going our way, we can actually put on a hat. It's a very great idea. <laughs> I don't know, I know how to feel about that. All right. Uh, Tiny Mike, thank you very much for uh, your support. Um, okay, yes, the she shatters the wooden cage. Splinters and pieces of wood go flying everywhere. Uh, the occult club scream and and just kind of try to find a corner, but it's a round room, so there's no corners. Also a great way if you ever want to screw with your bard in a DD and d game. Just set it in a round room. They have no corners to hide in. Um, yeah. So that's her turn. And now it's Lenny's turn. All right. Well, Lenny luckily is right by that cage. Uh, so he's going to he's gonna uh, just rocket punch her a bunch with turn his it just and, and or he's just gonna go water punch and try and, and punch and we're gonna see how i'll describe it if it's successful now <laughs> you just need to roll a four mm -hmm. all right we'll see we'll see if i have the ability uh it's always in question um so i i rolled a six total and one of them was a six well, they would both have to be sixes. Okay, or yeah. Maximum on both dice. So uh, it does hit. It does hit. Go ahead and roll your damage. Okay. Uh, let's do that. Roll those same again, and then we'll see. So that that will be thirteen damage. As like, what he does is his fists become like like torrents of water, and he uh, he punches, and then as he comes back, it's Kim's face and saying, uh, "How did it get burned?" And he's just like, "Bam, bam." Bam, how to get burned? Bam, how to get burned? Bam. Yeah, a throwaway line I say in one episode that I kind of meant as a joke has now become a rally cry here. I'm fine with it. So, uh, real quick, uh, even though you're off campus, you hear the sounds of dun, 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 dun. Attention, North Point students. Attention, North Point students. We have some messages to share. First up from Tony with an I. Dibs on the dead. Let's go. I don't, I don't know what they're talking about. Uh, next up we have a Nenny Moose saying draw. Well, I don't know what that's about. Strange kids. I, I don't get it. I don't get it. And next up we have Tiny Mike. Oh, that's adorable. I, I love that name. Saying, that's my son. That's my boy. Ah. Uh, well, Tiny Mike, uh, you know, I, I don't support teenage uh, parentage, but you know what? I'm glad you're a supportive parent. Okay, I'm, I'm going to get back to my hair curlers now. Bum, 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 bum. Thank you all very much for those toasts. <laughs> Sorry to interrupt everything, but I noticed we had those, and I want to send love where it's deserved. All right. So, Lenny, you do seven damage to her after her defenses, and she does not seem happy. Uh, Emancipation, it's your turn. It's time for the truth to set her free. Ah. Remember who you were. You are the Morrigan. DJ uh, Little Bit. I rolled a 12. Okay, that's definitely going to hit. Go ahead and roll your damage. <laughs> I rolled a 10 on damage. All right. Uh, with her defense, that turns into a 4. Um, math, we can do it here. Um, okay, yeah. Between uh, Lenny 
Lennox's rocket punch and Manny's uh, sword, she is actually taking some real damage. She's shifting between the three forms. And when she turns into the bird woman, it the voice changes enough and you hear her say something, but it's really hard to make out. It's not there yet. Uh, we're moving on to Iris. Okay. So I'm still like, am I clinging to her still? Yes, you are. Okay. Um, and, mm, okay, I'm going to try to show her, I, I'm going to try to create, um, a, 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 a reality knife, but for me, for her to see, and I, and, and but I want it to like, hmm, not just for me, but like, I want it to show mine. And then I want it to show like everybody's here and also just like random people throughout history or whatever. And I want, <laughs> if it works to say to her, like, like I'm born, I live, I die. They're born, they live, they die. And then just like show her that like everyone experiences loss. Like that's my goal is for her to understand that she's not alone in feeling loss. I love that. Okay. Go ahead and give me uh, charisma and power. Charisma and power. And add you to the role because this is, I think this is Iris sort of like dealing with something herself. Yeah, this is her own uh, major fear um, and that she feels alone in her own anxieties, but that's something everybody, the thing that she's the most afraid of is what everybody feels all the time. Mm -hmm. um, okay, charisma and power. Here we go, mama. And I, I'm sorry, did you say plus anything? Plus two. Two, thank you. Uh, eight, nine, 10. Okay, um, that is going to push uh the conflicted condition from 10 to 15. whoa okay great yeah uh she is not feeling like herself yes um next up is dahlia <sighs> does she look hurt oh yeah yeah, no. Um, whenever she turns Ooh. back into sort of the feral version of herself, you can see like the sword wound and like she, you're not sure how bones bruise, but this is a bo bruised bone. Bones do bruise. I got a bone bruise once. It lasted for six months. As did oh, I. It was my coccyx. Oh. That's your what was your What was your bone? It, you was, my sh it was my shin. Oh. Wait, wait, wait. I did not know this was a thing. This explains something that happened to me once, and I'm kind of like, oh! Yeah, it's not broken, but it is bruised. Yeah. I had this part on my leg that, like, if it so much as grazed the table, I'd be like, ah, fuck yeah. my life! And it takes so, months and months to heal. Yeah, no, that was, like, my entire junior year of college. Anyway. <laughs> um, I'm actually going to go over to where Mandy is being held with the occult students. Mm -hmm. Because I remember the Phantom Queen screaming about needing a key as she was trying to get Mandy back. And so I'd like to go over to Mandy and uh, try to conjure up some kind of like smelling salt material to put under her nose to wake her up. Okay, I like that. Um, yeah, that's going to be intelligence and we'll just say power. It's simple enough. Uh, what is everyone's AP at right now? I'm at 10 now. Okay. I'm I at 10 as well. Yeah, I think I'm at, I should be at 12, I think. All right. Uh, I'm at 17. <laughs> you guys have a lot of brain power. All right. Um, so, Dahlia, you, it absolutely works. She snaps awake, and as she does, um, you see her hoodie that she's wearing. It's kind of half zipped down to her navel. And you see uh, there's a key and a lock in her chest. Ooh. Mandy, can I ask where you got that key? She I'm looks at you. And safe. She points to the Phantom Queen behind you. 
She gave you that. Uh huh. Have you? Has it talked to you at all? Has it taken on a form? Has it told you it? It has a name. I know this sounds weird. It's mine. Yeah, that I'm. That's fine. No, no, no. It's my key and my lock. Um. She pulled hmm. it out of me. So who are you? So I'm Mandy Murphy. I'm a senior. I'm not magic. I'm not special. That's what turns them into crows? Okay. So we need to keep you away from her and keep this key away from her too. I'm going to do whatever I can to protect you. Behind you, fun. DJ Phoenix, I am Zero Hawk and Ice Bunny 101 are all just gawking at this uh, bizarre creepypasta CCP sort of thing. Whoa. The occult club is going to have so much material for like the rest of their life. This is all... <laughs> Oh no, this no one's going to ruin these people. Like these kids are going to be like, no, no, this I'm is not, just I'm like not going to college. To college. I'm, not, I'm not getting a job. I'm going to become like a real paranormal investigator because it is no longer is just the phase, mom. No, this it is, is not a lifestyle. This is reality. <laughs> I'm not delusional. You are. There goes reality. Oh, there goes gravity. Listen, Mandy, just if I tell you to do something, if any of my friends out there tell you to do something. You have to follow what we're saying exactly. Don't second guess us, okay? Uh, okay. We are going to protect you. Okay. Also, hi. Hi. Um, next, next up is Orpheus's turn. Um, he is now a. Uh, he's no longer a rabbit. He is a rabbit-shaped crow. Um, a creature of black obsidian. And, oh, he found it, finally. Thank God. Um, he pulls down a key. It's a white key, one of those dead keys that you know he can bring back. Um, it looks similar to Lenny's key. It's old and bent and... and and the head is a barrel. And he tosses it your way, Dahlia. I'm going to catch it. Orpheus no longer has the face you remember, but he's looking at you. What, do I, what do I do with this, Orpheus? He motions to the door. You want, you want me to, but I thought we weren't supposed to touch the door. He gives a sad little nod. And that's when Orpheus begins to dissolve. And you hear in the back of your mind, thanks for singing with me. I'll unlock the door for you, Orpheus. Dolly's going to get up and start moving toward it. All right. We move to the top of the order, um, which is no longer uh, the Phantom Queen, but is Lenny. All right, Lenny's gonna. I'm gonna try and and conjure up some water, some beer to try and like grapple the Phantom Queen and hold her. All right, um, is this an attack, or are you just trying to give another condition? I'm just trying to like, yeah, keep her from being able to to move. I don't know, to hold her still. <laughs> All right, this sounds like strength and power. Okay. Let's go and do that. Strength is this one. Power is that one. Uh, so that's going to be an eight. Okay. Uh, she is held four. 
I okay. So so the water like forms up and like these four shapes grab her, and then one of them has Kim's face, and the other three you, you may not recognize, but I assume because I saw the time knife and saw everything, uh this these are the faces of Gemma, John, and Kyle, who were Kim's friends as teenagers, and they're all holding her back. Okay, I love it. They are all people she would know. Uh, next up is Manny. Manny would like to summon Kimmy herself because I've noticed that Kimmy is not here and yet we are where Kimmy would normally be. So I would like to open up a hole or something in this. Dahlia did attempt to do that. So there is a large crack in the wall. I would like to make that crack bigger so that Kimmy can get through. Okay. Uh, give me strength and power and you will add three to it because Dahlia got a six on that roll, I believe. Okay. Uh, plus the two from my being a guardian. So eight, nine, 10, 13, 14, plus three, mm -hmm. 17. 17. You blast a hole through this wall. Um, you see the cemetery outside. You see the sunset. You can hear the cars arriving at North Point. You can hear the storm that Kelly has, sorry, that Iris created. Um, and you see Kim standing in front of her grave. What the I, hell? Come on. She is making a break for it. Towards you, obviously. She just runs off. Yep, Let's fuck this. Bye. <laughs> this is too right. weird. All right, Iris, uh, you're up now. Um, Kim has entered the chat. Uh, Orpheus has evaporated. Dahlia is running towards the door. And Loki was here for a second. Where did he go? There's a lot going on. So many, many things. Okay. Uh, lots of cooks in the kitchen. Um, has the Phantom Queen seen Kim yet? Uh, not yet. She's currently fighting off the liquid Kims and trying to, uh, shove you off. Oh, right. Very I'm hard. Still clinging on to her. Yes. Uh... Okay, I'd like to uh, uh, ask Kali to create a like uh, a small um, black hole in between uh, where uh, the Phantom Queen and uh, um, Kim are, and then like like create a universe, snuff it out and then blink it from existence, thus creating a vacuum that would pull Kim towards the <laughs> Phantom Queen. Okay, you're going, to, you're going to try to erase space. Yes. I love this. I mean, law of thermodynamics is gonna go somewhere. It's gonna end up like, I don't know. I'm not gonna, that's a future problem. Listen, listen Iris, this is how you end up with a house of leaves. I'm yes. just saying. Yes. But you can absolutely do this. But that's future or maybe past Iris's problem. Yes, or all at once. <laughs> all right, Iris. Okay. Uh, go ahead and give me a uh, intelligence and range roll, actually. Intelligence and range. Ten. Okay. Um, she was not very far away, and... Okay, I'm dead, but what the fuck was that? Kim asked as she stands right in front of the Phantom Queen. I just want to be like, look to the Phantom Queen at point at Kim. The Phantom Queen stops. We are out of combat. The Phantom Queen stops and she takes on a full form. She is no longer bone white and red. She is black and golden. She is as warm as a midnight in June. She is horrifying and beautiful and wonderful. 
and she weeps. She weeps. I just needed to open it. I just needed to let him out because if he got out, I could be with you and I could be with the Dagda and this would all be okay. Dahlia, as you approach the doors of Oblivion, uh, you're greeted by Loki. Hi, I'm Loki. Do you want to do something bad, but I promise we'll end good? I feel like I'm already about to do that. Great. Um, he produces a key that doesn't look like any key you've seen before. It does not have the same energy that the divine keys have. It has a more concentrated, potent power around it. Um, and it looks a lot like the one sticking out of Mandy. Key of humanity. She really needed this. Without breaking eye contact with you, he shoves it into the door and unlocks it. One of the large steel locks slowly turns and then falls off. Now we just need his key, darling, if you don't mind. This one? Yes. Oh, thank God I thought you were about to take away my chance to do Orpheus's last request. I was no, going to no, get really yours. mad at you. Okay. All yours. She's going to put it in the lock and turn it. The second lock falls and the doors of oblivion swing open. As they do, all four of you see eyes on the other side. They are not full filled with hate for hate is an emotion. Hate is something that means you care. This is something completely indifferent to your suffering. It's indifferent to your being. It has no humanity to argue with and it is vile. You see crows hundreds of them reaching out, flailing. Um, and Loki gives Manny a very weak smile. It's bad, but I promise it'll be good later. And he snaps his fingers. The four of you are now in the basement of the old auditorium. You knew this was the urban legend stated, this is how you would find the Phantom Queen, down here, where if you made an offering to the strange stain on the wall, eventually she'd show up or something. You're there, and you are joined with the rest of the occult club. They all looked horribly confused. And Kim is there. And she is alive. And she is with the Morrigan, who extends a hand to you, Iris, because the chat unlocked this. It is a dance, correct? And I would like to dance with all of you. Me, me first? Kim looks down at her hands and then touches a wall, drags her nails across the concrete a little. Oh, that felt terrible. <laughs> oh, that felt something. And she pushes the Morgan towards you, Iris. Uh, <laughs> as the Morgan's like push towards me, I'm gonna just like, oh! <laughs> and like ca catch her like, like did it in? <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Um, you hear the faint music coming from the homecoming dance as you da as uh, she takes her time dancing with you because all four of you brought back the Morrigan's humanity. Ma Mahat, is, is this okay? Is, is everything okay? Is this some kind of illusion? Mahat takes the form of the wings. I don't know. This is real. This is not an illusion. This is happening. This happened. You are in reality. But I don't know if this is okay. Uh, 
Cool, cool, cool. And you have a prior engagement to get to. Do, oh, okay. Um, you guys, I I have to go. I have I have to do the, the MCing for the auction, and they're gonna notice if I'm missing, and it might be bad. Um, but keep an eye on what's going on here, and you know, text me if anything weird happens. Uh, but uh. Yeah, Manny out. Bye. And like you could see them kind of like casting glances over their shoulder as they like head out of the auditorium basement and they just like stop in front of Kim and sort of. Oh, <laughs> oh, you you are real. Yeah, I'm very much alive and uh, I intend to keep it that way. We will have to talk about that later. I unfortunately need to skedaddle because I have a job to do. Also, Lenny, aren't you playing in this game? <laughs> I'd like to attempt to dip the Phantom Queen. Uh, you dip her and she is very impressed and she kind of gives you a look that's almost scary, but not really. Oh, a dance off, is it? Fine. Oh, I, I didn't know that's what and I was she starting. You. She twirls you and does that thing where you end up with one leg in the air. <laughs> like, whew. Yes. I would wow. show you, but I'm pretty sure I'd break my back. <laughs> wow. Okay, this is exhilarating. I am terrified, but I do like it. How's Dahlia? Dahlia's crying. She's not even paying attention to anything. She's just thinking, she like keeps looking over at Iris dancing and getting a little chipper about it, but then thinking about all the nights that she and Orpheus danced in her room and now Orpheus isn't here anymore. And so she's missing her best little dance partner. And she's thinking about how he thought he was an accessory to her, but she was an accessory to him in her mind. Oh. And how's Lenny? Uh, Lenny's just kind of like standing there, and he's gonna just sit down next to uh, sex, sit, sit down next to Dahlia and go. You know, if there's like one thing I've learned in um, past few months, and also the eternity I spent looking into the void. Um, that, you know, we only have like these little moments. So I think Orpheus had some pretty good ones with you and you should take comfort in those moments. Let me, uh, is that really you? Cause that was really good advice. Emotionally mature and everything. Yeah. My head's in a really weird space right now. Wow. Um, Iris wants, I, I want Iris to uh, like let go of one of the hands of the Phantom Queen and kind of like open it up. And like she sees Dahlia and Lenny sitting and she's like, and they start like, do you know that jump dancing thing? Yeah. <laughs> like that. <laughs> I, uh, Iris, Dolly's gonna hold out her hand for Lenny. He'll take right. that hand. And then go over to Iris and the Phantom Queen. As you all do that jumping dance, hearing the faint sounds coming from the homecoming game and the homecoming dance itself, uh, you're joined in by other members of the Occult Club, who you have ruined, by the way. These, they're all gonna be like, no, the truth is out there. They're X-Files. <laughs> For the rest of their life. Fal Chu and Al Choco Porter uh Guim Mara Lo. I got it. Took this try. Uh give a mouse of Benny Forever Imp CEC the Ronin. They all join you. And then you're joined by the smokers who weren't going to go to homecoming and they were hiding out back there, but they heard the whole rigmarole and they can't see the Phantom Queen. And they Ashuric, Critical Bard, RPG Clyde, Que Squared, and tu Tuberculosis. Cute. All kind of look down, and Kim looks up at them and goes, Sup, I'm a dead 
I'm a dead chick. And they all go, Brad. And as you have this uh, makeshift homecoming dance uh, below the old auditorium, Manny, you get up on that stage and you are auctioning and people love you. Simi David 95 is bidding peak one, Wanderer 1521. All three of them helped set this up and they did a great job and they're rooting for you. The Dupsy, uh, who is definitely, he's like almost as rich as Lennox, but we don't talk about that. <laughs> He bid so much money on a, one of those mini Super Nintendos and Dragon 55 is in competition with them. And they're just like, no, no, it's mine. And even though, it, like Lenny said, you, it was rough, but it's these moments that make it good. And you have all survived the first uh, season of New Pantheon Academia. Wow. Yay! I am so glad. Thank you all so much. Uh, and by you all, I do mean this table. Thank all four of you. This has been one of my favorite seasons of anything I've done on Saving Throw or any campaign ever. I'm having a blast. Um, my name is Stephen Pope. You can find me online at still Stephen Pope. Yes, I'm back on Twitter. Ha ha. Take that, turfs. Um, you can see me shit post and talk about music from the nineties because, uh, what else am I going to do on the verge? Uh, before we throw it over and do our normal plugs, I want to give a very quick shout out to, uh, Dice X Machina. Uh, it's their season finale tomorrow. Go watch it. It's D and D in Theros with Riley Silverman running and she is a queen and we must stand. So go check that out. And, uh, Aki is your show on Wednesday? Yes, no games, no masters on Wednesday. All games, no masters. All games, no masters. Thank you. All games, no masters. The GM less gaming show. Uh, last week, you guys played uh, The Quiet Year, right? Yes, and we are continuing The Quiet Year this week because we didn't quite finish because <laughs> we got very caught up, but that's okay. That's nice. how those storytelling games usually go. They're like, oh, it's been a couple of hours, and we're. I still want to go. <laughs> I love that. We still um, have three more seasons to get through in that game. So, <laughs> awesome. Um, and also, hey, even though this is our season finale, we will be back next week. Yes, I know. Uh, it's almost like I lied to you, but I promise it's not. Uh, next week, we are doing a gaming marathon charity drive for the Trevor Project. It's an organization near and dear to my heart. Big old gay. Um, they do a lot of great work for LGBTQ community and things like that. So please check it out. It starts Sunday, February 7th, starting at 8 at 10 a.m. Pacific time. We have plenty of special guests, and we're going to have a special guest in can I say it? I think we already said it on Twitter. I guess. Yeah, we've been promoting it for Yeah. Yes. Amazing. Oh man, I've been helping them make their character. It's fantastic. You are going to love them. Uh, I'm really excited about that. Uh, so Kelly, where can they find you online? Um, my mic just got really hot, and I don't know why. Uh, you can find me on all of the social media at Kelly Nugee, K-E-L-L-Y-N-U-G-E-E. -E -E. Uh, and that's on, you know, Twitter, Instagram, and Twitch. Um, check out Teen Creeps, uh, my podcast about YA Pulp Fiction. Um, same day shipping, the podcast where we ship everybody with everybody. And you know what? Check out Exile. You, if you like narrative horror, check that out. Um, put a lot of my heart and soul into that thing. So uh, just Exile, anywhere you find podcasts. Nice. Uh, R.I.P. Mika, where can they find you not dead? Uh, they can find me not dead on any social media site as R.I.P. Mika. Um, this is my only weekly show. So you can catch me next Sunday for our one shot. <laughs> And I stream mostly every other day. So find me at twitch.tv slash RIP Mika. Nice. Aki the Royal. <laughs> Hi, everybody. I'm Aki, and you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Mixed Genie in a Bottle. That's 
M-X-G-I-N-I-I-N-A-B-O-T-T-L-E. Um, and yeah, uh, I do lots of things all over the internet. If you want to find out where I am and what I'm doing, you can definitely come and check me out uh, over on my personal Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash Shidari Aki. That's S-H-I-D-A-R-E-A-K-I. Um, and of course, on Wednesday, you can catch All Games No Masters at 7 p.m., where we will be continuing our playthrough of The Quiet Year because we still got summer, autumn, and fall, uh, winter to get through. Uh, but yeah, uh, my table is bonkers, and we have a lot of fun, and I'm, I'm, I'm having a good time. A bonkers table with you? Never. And uh, Eric... Hi, everyone. My name is Eric. You can find me on all the things at Mostly Eric, which is Twitter, uh, Twitch, where I stream video games uh, throughout the week. Uh, you can catch me. Uh, we, we will all be back here next week for uh, for the marathon. You can also catch me on uh, there at 10 a.m. for the the sort of uh, sneak preview of Salt Bay Court of Thorns, which is the new uh, series uh, from the cast of, of Pirates of Salt Bay. So you get to see, we see what we're working on for that show. Nice. Awesome. Uh, hey, make sure you stick around here, even though we'll be leaving, because we're going to go raid Q time. See, yeah, we got friends over there. Uh, and really special thanks to all of you for watching, this table for being wonderful, and Dom Zook for making all of this possible. Make sure you check out Noble Knight Games. We can't do this without you. We can't do this without sponsors like them. Uh, Use code SAVING10 for 10% off your order at noblenightgames.com. Uh, and, hey, thanks so much. You have a great time, and uh, we'll see you next season. Bye.